Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this episode, I want to go ahead and talk about the mediation function in JASP, the mediation analysis test. So before I begin, I wanted to just remind everyone who is watching that I am using the current preview build beta build of JASP 0.12.2. And um, even though it's in the same playlist as my other earlier JASP tutorials, I think the functionality from 0.10 to now is pretty much the same. But I did want to just, you know, in every video, make sure that I'm mentioning that. It's also in the title of the, the video as well. Okay, so let's talk about the mediation analysis. Let me go ahead and open up a data file. Okay, so I have my data open. This is uh, data that you, uh, if you've been watching my most recent videos, I've just sort of been using all the way through. Uh, it's uh, some, some data that I collected in my early days of graduate school. Okay, so let's talk about mediation analysis. One thing that you will note is if you are just opening your JASP, you might not see all of these modules. You see these first six modules next to the hamburger menu, but then you also see this plus key here, this plus button. This is where you add additional modules, okay? You can see that I have them all checked here, and um, they fit across they fit across the top because this is a full screen viewing in 1080p. But what you want to look for is the SEM. So if I uh, check and uncheck that one, you'll see SEM uh, sort of disappear and reappear here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on SEM. And you can use SEM for structural equation modeling, or you can do it as this video is indicating mediation analysis. Now, mediation analysis is a kind of regression analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up here so it brings up the options and the results screen so we can look at it in real time. So mediation analysis is for regression questions and analyses. So this would be a linear regression. And the idea with mediation is that um, not everything is as simple as this predictor has a direct effect on the outcome variable. And so I think there is some sort of intervening variable, and that would be the mediator. And the mediator provides an indirect effect path between the predictor and the outcome variables. So it's an additional variable that you have collected uh, in, and have in your data set. And uh, it gives you some added information. And obviously, this, sh this information, this, that what the data is telling you should be coming from a theoretical, theoretical perspective. Now, the, uh, the, <laughs> the example I'm going to go through today is not based on a theoretical example. It's just plugging some uh, variables in here just to show you how the functionality works. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in my variables. Now, here you have uh, what is, generally speaking, across the board, the main part of most of these modules in JASP. And that is where you put your variables in. So um, we have predictors, we have mediators, and we have our outcome variables. Okay. And here it looks like you can put as many as you want in. Uh, I'm only going to do one of each just to make this tutorial a little bit quicker and easier. You can also put in background confounders that add uh, error to this main equation here. And so any sort of background confounders like uh, I don't know, age or hum in the room or temperature in the room or something like, you know, if you're doing some sort of test. But uh, most mostly this is if, again, you have some theoretical or some setting based issues that you need to take care of. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to use predictors, mediator and outcome in one of each. So 
my predictor variable is going to be the test booklet. So booklet here means um, they either received modus ponens arguments or modus tollens arguments. So one or one or the other. So the series of arguments that they received in the booklet were either of modus ponens or of modus tollens. Okay, so that's where that comes in. And uh, I believe the mediator that I chose was age. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, the outcome variable were the average acceptance of true definitional conclusions in these modus ponens or modus tollens arguments. So that's going to be uh, my three here. And you can see uh, by default, once you put those in, it will bring up the results and um, we can easily see some bits of information one bit of information that i think is missing from this default output is the indirect uh effect or the mediation effect well i should call it the predictor to mediator effect you don't actually get that information unless you create a plot which i'll go over in just a second but here we have the direct effect. So this is my predictor uh, and my outcome variable. And so this is just a simple bivariate regression. And we get our estimate, negative 0.3. And we get a st standard error. And we get a z value for that. And based on that z value, we get a p value. And then we get our 95% confidence interval, which I believe is default. Uh, Let's see, can you change it? You can change it to a different percentage CI if you'd like, okay? And so but before I go into the options, I just want to talk about the rest of the, the, the other two tables here. So the indirect effects, uh, now again, this is only the total effect between booklet to age to the acceptance of these true definitional statements. So. It's essentially the age to uh, the outcome variable, the mediator to the outcome variable, which has a very small estimate and um, a very small z value based on that, which means it has a very large p value and our 95% confidence interval includes the value zero. So we can see that our indirect effect of age to those acceptance of true definitional doesn't mean much doesn't matter how old you are on these things which is good which is good to note there shouldn't be any mediation here to be honest with you so and then we can have our total effects which uh, essentially clumps everything together but you can see that it essentially just uh, sort of mimics the um, direct effects Okay, and uh, if you use something like SPSS, the process module, um, or you can you do this in R with the Lavan uh, package, and um, I'll show you that in just a second here. So we can we can modify the information that we get here. Um, like I said, you can change the confidence interval. You can get the standardized estimates if you want and what ends up happening here is that uh we get uh basically beta values here so this estimate now becomes 0.938 because they're very much uh related so in the opposite direction of course you, cause you can get betas instead of the estimate within the within the uh the, the uh, units of these two variables so you can get that you can also uh, get your r squared for your uh two essentially your continuous variables so booklet is a categorical variable so uh, we get r squared for our two continuous variables and we can see that r squared for the definition acceptance rates um it's pretty decent and then age is non-existent okay um, the other, so then the last thing, or well, not the last thing actually, is uh, you can, which I think is wonderful for this module, is uh, because this module is based on Levan in R, most of JASP, I'm sorry, all of JASP is based on R. If you go up to this blue eye for info on the analysis, it'll tell you all about it. 
and um, it will tell you uh, where you can find this output. Okay, the Levon website that is based on the Levon R package. And the great thing about this particular package or this particular module in JASP is that it will give you the syntax that you can use then to take to R or R Studio or whatever R uh, you are using. Uh, if you want to learn how to use R, the coding. And so this would be the coding information that you would get if you did uh, it R. And this is great. Um, and it has uh, the commented commented features about it already with the with the hash marks or the pound symbol, and so it will only read these lines here. And so this is a quick mediation in Levan, and it gives you similar information to the process uh, addition to SBSS. But uh, R is open source, and of course, SPSS is very expensive. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show you on here, I'm going to leave the model syntax up, is whether uh, how you want to handle the mediation. So you can do a standard mediation, um, which again is what Levon does, which is what Process does, but you can also then have it do either a, a ro robust. So I'll click that and. Not much is going to change. I'm going to change back the standard to uh, the regular estimates. You can see that just doing robust really hasn't changed much of anything. But uh, the third option is you can do uh, bootstrapping. And you can have the computer give you uh, however many replications you want. And you can see, so while I'm talking, you can see the, the bootstrapping bar up here. And so it's using all of my CPU to uh, render this bootstrap, which is fantastic. So we will, we will let it do its, do its thing. Um, I should, probably should have clicked on that before I was, was doing anything, uh, anything else. Uh, while it's doing that, I won't click anymore, but I will show you that you can make plots, and I'll show you a plot in just a second. And then uh, before I, I move on to the plots, which will be the last thing after the bootstrap is done, is um, the advanced options here. So you can change the estimator if you want. You can uh, auto, which I believe auto gives uh, maximum likelihood. I think the notes at the bottom of the table gave maximum likelihood. Um, you can do generalized least squares, uh, weighted least squares, unweighted least squares, and uh, DWLS, something something D weighted least squares. I'm not entirely sure what DWS is, BWLS is. Um, you can handle missing values, which is important. Uh, so and you can either say full information for the maximum likelihood, as much information as possible, or you can get rid of cases list wise. So if there is a missing value in one in a row, it won't um, include any information from that row. Um, and then you can emulate uh, in either M plus or EQS. Um, now, I don't have any familiarity with M plus, and it's been a more than a decade since I used EQS. So you can. Uh, do one or the other it looks like it's a radio button so it's one or the other and there really isn't um uh much to do unless you're familiar with those programs because it, what it will do is it'll give you the output that is based on these programs i don't know what it does um well, let's let's check see what happens it breaks okay so we'll do none it breaks it could be uh oh nope Let's do standard because I there we go. Can't wait for another bootstrap. So you if you if you pause on the bootstrap, if you go back uh, about a minute or so, uh, it, you will see that the bootstrap essentially gave the same information. You would use bootstraps if uh, if it uh, is theoretically uh, important, but also if it is um, statistically important. And, and bootstraps are, generally speaking, a good idea. Uh, and a lot of times you'll see a 5,000 replications. So I recommend that you do those uh, bootstrapping 
just to um, have a solid foundation for your conclusions from this data versus uh, not. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to mention is the model plot. So this will um, plop you your models here. And so one thing that it will will show you is uh, now this isn't really all that helpful without these two things marked uh, these these two options checked. So the parameter estimates. So instead of the path, which was showing you um, the numbers or the the path. So A11, B11, C11. Uh, this will actually give you the values. And so this is the value that I was talking about that the tables do not give you for indirect effects or the at least the mediation being the outcome variable. And so this number is missing from this table. So maybe maybe the folks at JASC can add that in uh, from the Levon output. That'd be nice. Um, and you can see you have a legend. And not only do you have the path values, but you also have the error values going into. So this little this little uh, path plot is very nice to just add to a, a paper, an APA paper or something. Uh, it's a nice figure to have for a mediation analysis if you are writing up uh, about a mediation analysis. So that is mediation in JASP 0.12.2. If you have any comments or suggestions or feedback, please leave that in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate it. I will keep making these if you keep asking for them. Thanks for watching.